Hello, everyone. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today for that, this very important announcement regarding the new term. And just wait a little bit, some minutes, so we can start our presentation here. So, so my name is Rodrigo. I'm the student service manager on BC campus and for the Archiville. And to me, with me today, we have Dr. Aman Kang. She's the program director for our BBA programs. And also we have Wei. Wei is now one of our program advisors here also in, in BC campus. And join later, uh, we have uh, Ivy. She's also joined us to help us. And one thing that I, I like before starting, and I'd like to let you know and ask you if you have any question during my pres our presentation, we can use the Q&A button. So we can just click there and add your question. So our team will be happy to answer all your questions. And if it's not uh, answered during uh, my presentation here. So let's start. Okay. Let's start here. So, that's our agenda for today. So we are talking about our on-campus classes and the next term registration. So what is look it look like and what you can do, you already cannot do it on campus. So some students already return in this term. So it's fall term. So we have students having classes on campus now, but uh, um, we have the we are planning to return and in January for more students are joining us in our campus. Yeah, what do you think? And uh, what about the clubs and activities that we are planning for our students? And after we have a Q&A, so we are answer questions that we have. And after that, we are wrapping up, okay? So first point here is regarding our on-campus. So what do we have here? What do you can expect for on campus from next term? So most of the courses will be on campus and some courses as general studies and a few other courses we are remaining on Zoom. But it's important to mention that the majority of the courses will be on campus from and next term. So we also planning some social activities clubs so we are organizing some clubs for running on campus so our student service team will be here to talk to you and also our student finance team and faculty members when they are on campus one point is very uh, important to mention that is the masks are mandatory on campus during the whole period we are here is valid for staff, students, and faculty members. So we are all, all people are masks are mandatory according to the BC regulation. We have some golden rules here that's very important to have in mind. And we are keeping, and so we are recommend to everybody to get. 
vaccine. So the vaccinations are provided by the government. So they are free, so free of cost. So the student, any even international student doesn't have to pay anything for get the vaccination. And respecting the personal space, so keeping keep the space for everybody. So try to keep all the spaces, uh, keep uh, six feet for each person when it's possible and follow the guidelines. So we are have many signs around the campus so we can follow, please follow all the guidelines that we have. And consider people's situation and comfort levels. That's important too. So we understand different needs we may have in our campus as well. In case you are sick, please stay at home. So that's a very important thing that I'll mention later. And clear your hands and check before you are coming. That's more for if you are traveling when you are studying here. And prefer to have activities outdoors. So that's some recommendations that we receive from the government. And that's very important. We have signs on campus, but it's very important to have in mind. So if you are sick, please stay at home. So don't or don't come to campus if you are sick. Okay, if you are feeling any symptoms rela related to, and if you are coughing or if you are sneezing or other symptoms, fever, please don't come to campus. So that's something very important to have in mind. And also important to isolate, not, not having contact to other people in case. That's very important and common question that we are receiving here. So the vaccination card, the vaccination card is not mandatory. So it's not want to be required for students to get in ca on campus, okay? So we are not requesting your vaccination passport, but it's very important to have a self-assessment. So feel if you are sick or if you have feeling any symptoms, please don't come to campus, okay? Yeah, and it's something that I can share with you guys. So I was feeling sick and uh, last week, and for this reason, I didn't come to campus. Even for staff or, or faculty members, it's valid for everybody here. And after I, I had my, I, I, I went to a clinic to get my COVID test, and after I, I received my negative results, so I will be eligible to return to campus. It's also the same rule for students, staff, and faculty members. Okay. Another point if you feel and if you get a positive a result for COVID, or if you know someone, so any student that got a positive re result uh, for COVID, please email on us so because we are keeping tracking all the students that you have positive case so please email to the covid save it dot nwc at yorkview.ca so email on us if you have if you, if you are if you got a positive and results for your covid test or if you know other student they get it or they get it uh, symptoms okay so we are here to help you guys to have the, the correct uh, procedures in case. And another point here, now we are moving on to next term registration. So we are going here to give it some guidelines regarding the registration and other procedures that we have here and refresh your mind or maybe some information could be new for you. And one point is very uh, important. So international students, they have to enroll for three or four courses. So for keeping your international, your students uh, status, full-time full student status, you have to be enrolled for three or four courses. So that's very important to have in mind. If you are planning to have five courses, and please, uh, important to, open a ticket to request. Of course, that's something very uh, demanding. So we understand three or four courses is, is a lot already for having in, the, in one term. In, for considering five courses, 
you, you must be aware that's very hard to, to keep five courses at the same time, okay? Hi, Rodrigo, it looks like um, we are not able to... Oh, I cannot hear, okay. Hi, uh, sorry, Rodrigo, it looks like, you know, you froze for just about two to three minutes. Would you want to repeat what you spoke about the five courses here? Yeah, I just mentioned that it's, it's very hard and it's very difficult to, to have five courses in the same term. So, and it's important to be aware of that's that's very complicated so that's after considering to have five courses better to to understand that it's very difficult to run to have five courses in the same term that we are recommend to have three or four courses per term uh, certainly and i would if i may rodrigo i'd like to add to that point so whenever you're making a request for five courses please uh, be careful of the workload that it is it requires to Make sure that you do well in these five courses. Completing your program soon is very important, but also making sure that you know you have the uh, you have a good GPA and you maintain good academic standing. That's equally important. So five courses amounts to quite a lot of workload. Please be mindful of making a request for the fifth course or an additional course. Um, you know. Take care of all the work that you'd be required to do to be able to add in that course, right? Over to you, Rodrigo. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Let me continue here. And so now we are going properly for the registration steps. So there are some steps that it should must be followed and for registration. So I believe the registration link will be released this week, so I don't have exactly which date will be released, but at some point of this week. So be aware in our in our communication. So probably you're receiving soon our registration link to register your courses for next term. So there are some steps that are very important. So one, the first step here is important to confirm and change your address and your local address and personal phone number. So it's very very important point here. If before going forward in our registration period, please add your uh, local phone number, your, your current uh, address. That's important for our communication. So please don't forget this step. Moving forward here, we have all the information regarding your uh, courses that we have in your study plan. So. That's the courses that we have in your study plan. So check those courses. And if they are accurate, or if you, in case we have already done those, any courses, please let us know because we can, we can work here to change if, if there is any, any mistake happen here. So here's the courses and also the tuition per course and also uh, the international student fee that is always in your, your plan. And moving forward here, we have some um, acknowledgements that we, you should uh, click and assign those as those. So you recommend that you assign all those uh, acknowledgements here to keep moving forward to the selection page. So that's the next page that you can see here. So after that, after confirm, we go to the schedule selection. So that's the next page that you see here. Just click on this button and move forward to the next page here. And that's a very important point before moving to forward. So we'd like to share some uh, sections, codes that you can see here. There are some different according to the course's delivery. So as you can see here, there are three different uh, type of delivers. So we have on-campus, Zoom, and online. 
So the sections code, they are a little bit different. So please make sure be very um, careful when you are assigned your courses. As I mentioned before, so majority of our courses you be on campus and there are some Zoom courses available as well. Um, but if Dr. Rahman would like to contribute here. Uh, certainly, thank you so much, Rodrigo. And this pertains to quite a few questions that many have you uh, asked in the question and answers section. Well, um, we are a part of the post-secondary institutions, institutional system in British Columbia. And as per the ministry, all uh, post-secondary institutions have been asked to go to, uh, to go back to campus and start offering, uh, start offering courses as normal, as, as was the case pre-COVID, right? So since we are a part of, um, since we are a part of this system, and like all other post-secondary uh, institutions, we are going to be offering majority of the classes on campus, with an exception of a few general studies, um, you know, with, with an exception of a few general studies courses. Uh, so we would be offering majority of the courses on campus. Um, and um, some of you are asking with respect to, you know, whether you can take three courses on Zoom or whether you can take, uh, you know, whether you'll have to do all courses on campus. Uh, like I said, about 90% of the business courses are being offered on campus. So if you happen to take three business courses and one general studies course in a term, then three business courses are, your classes are going to be on campus. I'd like to make a small correction. Um, to what my colleague V has been adding to the chat here. Uh, we, uh, we, we would primarily be offering on-campus courses. So students, uh, you should be prepared to come back to campus for uh, taking a session and for taking your classes. Majority, like I said, uh, are gonna be offered on campus. And we encourage you to, um, to enroll in on-campus sections. Um, Rodrigo has highlighted how will you identify an on-campus section and a Zoom section? Uh, online courses are not, uh, you know, are not uh, something that international students should ideally opt for because their mode of delivery, their specified mode of delivery, if you look at your vices, it'll indicate what is, um, what is the mode of delivery that you should ideally opt for. So you certainly should be, taking the on-campus courses. However, uh, it is different for students who are in Canada versus students who are outside Canada. So students who are in Canada are expected to be on campus to attend their classes. Uh, if for a reason you have traveled outside the country and if you're you know, attending classes from outside, then uh, certainly you can reach out to your program advisor and we will see what uh, what are the relevant options available? But uh, winter 2022 term expects you to be back to campus and attend classes on campus. And uh, please make sure the right that you end up selecting the right sections. It will make it very easy for you as well as the registrar's office. You'll not have to reach out to registrar's office to open tickets and uh, request for change in sections. If you are mindful of, you know, how to choose the right sections when we are registering for the courses. Uh, over to you, Rodrigo. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Eman, for your contributions. They are very important to to mention all the details that we have here. And here, so how it looks like the next page that you can see here. So we have all all the courses in your study plan here, and that's our suggestion. So that's so we can see the schedule and below here. So how it looks like the schedule and the part here, we can see all the courses as I mentioned here. And so the delivery here is very important and the sections that Dr. Raman mentioned here, you can see here the code of the section if they are on campus or if they are, you have a C here in the middle and no Z in the end and online courses, we have O in the middle here. So we strongly recommend that you don't take other uh, online courses except uh, general studies, okay? So 
please take our on-campus uh, sections. It's the best for you. And here in the last column here, we have all the availability for this section. So that's the dates, the date, what time you have the section. So we are three hours block. So from, in this case here is around 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And the second course here is from at 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. And here, the third one is from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. So here we go moving forward to the next page. So here we can see all the courses that we have in your study plan and also the what time, the availability that we have here. So again, so here in the first column, you have all the, the courses and the second columns are how you deliver. And it's important to mention the delivery method here also for Zoom in case you have Zoom. So it's also mentioned as on campus, they don't mention online. Okay, so the section code here, you can see here again. And here, if it is if the section is uh, full, you mention here in red the section full, or if it is almost full, they also mention here. So it's important to to check it here in advance to to choose which section you are you you are choosing for this particular course. And moving forward here, uh, it's important to mention, uh, maybe you'd like to add a new course or you want to drop a course and there is a, a deadline for that. So the deadline is during the registration period. So as soon as you release the registration link for you, we also have a deadline. So until the deadline, you can add or drop courses. Okay, so please make sure all the selections are accurate, even if you, uh, it's important to also mention that we, we cannot adjust our uh, schedule according to the work. We understand the students work and when they are studying because we are allowed to work 20 hours per week, but it's important to mention that your priority is to study. Okay, so please adjust your work to your study plan, not the opposite way, okay? And here are some um, important information, some requests that our student service and program advisors team receive here. And make sure, especially the terminology or the nouns that you may use. So deferral. So we are in your request, program deferral, it's just for students, they didn't start yet. I believe that's a majority for you uh, already start your program. So you are no longer eligible for deferral a program, okay? So it's just for students, they didn't start your program yet. And for those cases, students, they didn't start yet, and they must have a sound reason to, to request the deferral, okay? So after start a program, we are no longer allowed to defer. And there is a course withdrawal. So that's some, when you will request to drop a course, and, and during the program, okay. So if you are think if you think you are you'll be failing, so you don't your your grades are low, your attendance are low, so you think you are not going to you are not pass in this course. Yeah, we are eligible to withdraw the course, okay, during the program. Your deadline for withdrawal is um, to the week eight. For this current term, is a red pass. So the day just to give them. It was in November 30, 23rd, okay? But for your information for the next term, we are eligible to withdraw uh, any course that we have until the week eight. Um, it's a, there is no penalty for a student uh, full-time status. So we are remain, you are keeping your student uh, full-time status, even if you draw a course, 
Okay, that's important. You receive some uh, questions in our for your program advisor regarding the pro course withdrawal. And here is the end of the break uh, when the, the term is ending. So students are requesting, so can I work full time or cannot work full time? Well, I'm eligible to work. So during this period, so December 26th and to January 3rd, so we don't have a classes. So it's the, this break. So the students are eligible to work. There is no limit of hours. Sometimes you mention 40 hours, but actually there is no limit to work during this period. Okay, so you're eligible to work how many hours do you want or as possible and during the December 26th and to January 3rd. Another point is regarding the leave of absence. So that's some request that if you can, you can do it. When we are stopping your program, and you are planning to continue later. So you stop one term and after we can continue. So it's also possible. So we can stop your program and continues after. We need to fill a form to, to request it. And also there is a, a continuous enrollment fee that we need to, to pay to request your leave of absence. And it's important to mention, if you request a leave of absence, we are not allowed to work even 20 hours as a student, your student permit, okay? So if you request a, a leave of absence, we cannot work during that period. And there's another break that we could be request is optional. And uh, is the name is schedule break. So we can uh, request a break. So as you know, we have four terms in a an year and after three consecutive terms, you can request a schedule break. It's optional. If you request the schedule break after three terms, um, we, you can work during that term. It's, 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 it's the same as a summer break or you get this period that a break, we, you can work legally and we are allowed to work no limit of hours. So it's important to mention the difference between leave of absence and a schedule break. Both you are not studying that period, but one allows you to work full time and the other one doesn't allow you to work even 20 hours per week. Another point here is the grade appeals. So we are, students are eligible to appeal the grades, but it's important to mention that is in, first you have to talk to your professors to find a solution for that appeal before you send a formal grade appeal. So your professor is always the first uh, uh, point of contact to regarding any, any discuss about the grades or the method or the, the reasons or how they find that grade. If you don't find a solution, we can, and we can submit a grade appeal, okay? You have a deadline for a submit a grade appeal. It's 48 hours after you receive uh, the final grade in your Moodle account. So don't forget, we have this deadline. So it's 48 hours. So after up to 48 hours, you can submit. After 48 hours, you cannot, you're no longer eligible to submit a grade up here. Here's regarding the health insurance. And that's a very important that the students are responsible to always keep our uh, Yorkville team informed regarding your health insurance. So it's mandatory during the other program, even if you are in schedule break or leave of absence, we have to remain your uh, health insurance uh, updated. So we can, there are two options. So we can request your health insurance through Yorkville. So we are providing a health insurance um, to you so we can roll, you can pay using your credit card details or 
EFT, so it's up to you. Or you can submit your MSP, that's the provincial health assistance that we have. So we can send your MSP. One of those are accepted by the Yorkville. In case you are switching for your health insurance, there you provide to MSP, please don't, don't lose your time and send in any advance, not when you are expiring your health insurance. Please send way in advance so we can switch this information and we don't need to request your renewal for your health insurance. Regarding finance, so sometimes you have any questions regarding finance, your, your payments or tuition fees. So please, any question regarding any think about your payments, please contact your student finance. So there is this email, bc studentfinance at yorkviewu.ca. So if you have any question or for in case your account is locked, please that's the correcting uh, contact details that we have too. So here is about other service that you provide here. Maybe they are not so, sometimes you are not people they don't know, but it's important to mention that if you are, if you need any accommodation to stay during your study with us, and please don't hesitate to contact uh, Maria Ortega. So she's the, the person responsible here in British Columbia in our campus. So we can reach her to two different ways. Uh, accessibility at yorkville.ca or you can book a confidential book uh, appointment with her so we can access this link. It's also in our website. So we go to success.yorkville.ca. We also we can access all the service that you provide. Uh, it's the same for a uh, student wellness center. So any, we know, especially during the winter time, so we, we know this, we have short days. So, so it's important sometimes people feel not depressed or feel alone, especially for international students, it's very common happen. Don't hesitate to contact our wellness counselor. If you are not feeling well, so we need any support, we, we provide this, those service for free. Okay, so you can contact her at, and through, through the online booking or also we can email her. Okay, she'll be very happy to assist you if you, if you need any, any help. And now moving forward here, so we can, what you can do, what you cannot do on campus. So, we are happy to support providing services on campus to students. So we can have appointments with the program advisors. So we are be here to talk to you in person and also through Zoom if necessary. And, and also your student finance advisor. So if you have any question regarding your payment fees, lock accounts. So we have also a student finance working from campus to come to to talk to you. And we have access to our cafeteria, our lounge. We have vending machine here. So we have, if you need to buy something here, we, we can provide and also we can, we can have here on campus. We are request to students to arrive only 50 minutes before your class, not long, no, no longer, not arrive earlier. And leave after 50 minutes after your class. That's it. We are, we are not, uh, the idea is to keep our staff, our faculty students as a, a safe environment for everybody. That's why you are requesting for now to keep those rules. So don't, don't arrive so early or don't leave after 50 minutes, just, just to keep our, our safety for everybody here on campus. And the point is, what you cannot do at this point on campus. So, so we cannot use our facilities at this point for study or after before classes. You cannot have some meetings with your study groups here. 
and meet colleagues or and also our elevator to our parking lot so we the building allowed only one person in the elevator okay just for letting you know other rules that we have in place at this point of course those rules they can change because it's dynamic so it's important we are keeping update information in our website so please use this link in our website so we can www.yorkviewu.ca so we can access all the update information uh, is you'll be there all the times or don't hesitate to contact our staff members here to know update information and other point here is regarding the clubs so we are very happy that we are resume our activities for clubs and social activities so something that we are planning now so we are planning to restart already next term our activities so i know that's very important for the students experience here we are happy to provide those services to everybody because we know that we are spending so many hours we are overseas so it's a good point good opportunity for connections networking during activities and clubs so don't hesitate to participate we are very happy to have all the students with us uh, in our activities and also in our clubs so that's our student life our student activities email so student life at yorkviewu.ca so please contact us if you are interested to participate there's no no fee is free for everybody so we are very happy to have all the students with us so here are some ideas that we are planning for next for next term some social and sports activities investment club and also peer-to-peer -to -peer tutoring so that's something that's very important for students to help new students or help uh, colleagues and volunteer experience so we are scheduling some uh, volunteer experience for you we know that when you are get a job it's important to provide some references here in canada it's very important so don't hesitate to participate in volunteer experience in our clubs so all of them count counts as for your experience here in canada okay we are planning others so also accepting ideas that we may have so we are already talking to some students they have some ideas we are combining those and create a calendar and after we are share but don't hesitate to talk to us if you are interested to have one club or if you want to participate please join us that's a very important for your experience and some activities that we are planning now some sports so we are planning some have games and practice and some social activities as Diwali, Hall uh, Halloween, holiday celebration. And also we are have one celebration for award for high standard GPAs. So keep your GPA high. So we have awards that we, we are providing for students have high GPAs and other activities that we are planning during the term and of, during the year. So we are open to receive all the ideas that we may have for our activities and clubs here. And it's important to mention our student service support. So we are always here. We are your study coaches. So we are here to support and give all the information that you may have. Don't hesitate to contact our team to help you. So you know there are so many information so many services there are so many courses we are helping you we need you here to help you to to to, to your study plan how you proceed how your pathway to your graduation so don't hesitate to contact our team so there are some ways to contact we have one-to-one -one appointment so you can contact your your program advisor so there are our program advisors here in our campus as Ivy, Wei, Sanan, and Luis. So they are our, our program advisors for you. So don't hesitate to contact them to arrange one one-to-one -one appointment. So we are here on campus Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday in this term. And the next term we are re revising here. 
because we are planning to have classes during the five days of the week on campus. So we are be, we'll be here to help you. So don't hesitate to arrange your meeting with them. And also we, we have a dropping sessions, daily dropping sessions. It means that we can just join our Zoom through Zoom. So from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., you can join and you can talk to us. If you have any question, urgent questions or any concerns that you may have, please don't hesitate to contact us through our dropping sessions daily, Monday to Friday. Okay, that's for me now. I don't know if Dr. Aman, if you have something to add to my presentation. Well, thank you so much, Rodrigo. Um, I was just trying to answer all the questions that we received in the Q&A, and I have been, um, I'm glad to see that this time around, we've received more questions that I could, you know, meanwhile, um, in the meantime, answer. So I'm pretty glad that, uh, that you've joined the session today and are finding it uh, finding it, you know, useful in the sense that <laughs> you're able to get answers to your questions. So uh, certainly you've covered it all, Rodrigo. I think it, it may be helpful if we sort of, you know, take a few questions, uh, um, uh, take a few questions that have been asked by the students here. I do see that <coughs> there are, excuse me, there are a lot of questions around um, attending classes on Zoom or coming for on-campus classes. now. There has to be a distinction that we need to make if we are present in Canada versus if we are outside Canada. So if we are um, in Canada, uh, we are expected to be present. So students are expected, so the, all those students who are present in Canada are expected to attend their classes on campus as scheduled. Another thing that I'd like to point out here is that not all courses are offered on Zoom. There are only very few classes that are offered on Zoom. And uh, these are classes that are primarily scheduled from 6 to 9 p.m. Primarily because we sort of, you know, wanted to uh, avoid that time slot of 6 to 9 p.m. in the evening on campus. So uh, only very few classes or courses are being offered during the 6 to 9 p.m. Uh, slot on Zoom. So please be careful when you're selecting or when you're, when you're choosing the uh, sections. Having said that, uh, if you feel uh, that there are questions that you have, you can certainly contact your program advisors to make that choice of the relevant section. Uh, so then I get questions like, you know, whether I'd be able to take one course on Zoom and others on campus. Well, you would only be able to take a course on Zoom if the course is being offered on Zoom at all. So as I mentioned, majority of the courses are being offered as on-campus courses. So please uh, make sure that you are, you know, you're uh, choosing the right sections and creating the relevant schedule for yourself. Um, so that's, that's one. Um, I'm gonna go through a few questions and broad themes, Rodrigo, to see if we can possibly answer them together. And I am, Looking at the open Q and A, we have quite a few that are there. Okay, so, let me let me see here. Yeah. So yeah. That's... Students, another one that I'd like to take is that those students who are outside Canada and are waiting for their visas or for the relevant documents to be able to uh, to be able to come to Canada, they will still be able to continue to study online um, in BBA Global Program and BBA Global Program. Um, would would allow you to sort of you know uh, would allow you the opportunity to continue your studies from from outside Canada. The recent IRCC guideline is only relevant for students who are outside Canada and them taking those courses online. Over to you, Rodrigo. Yeah, I can see here so many questions. There are some students from Ontario as well. So for on campus students from Ontario, the rules exactly the same. They don't change for, of course, they are, the delivery probably a little bit changed. So please contact your program advisors to have more specific uh, information regarding uh, Ontario campus, Toronto campus, okay? So most of their, and uh, it's important to mention that this section, this webinar is being recorded 
we'll be you'll be releasing our uh, YouTube page. So after this presentation, we are keeping this this webinar available for everybody on YouTube. So if you have any questions, and oh, he mentioned about letter of accept, uh, LOAs and mentioned about the furrow or mention, please go there. If you have any question, check there, there's information. If you keep in having questions, please let us know and contact our program advisors. And here's regarding the registration mail and the registration link will be released this week. So we don't have exactly uh, when this, the day that you will release, but it's some day, at some point this week, as far as uh, we have information here. Yeah. So to the best of our understanding, at least as of now, you should be getting your registration emails very soon. Uh, today as well, if, uh, you know, if the technical team is able to uh, manage that. So as soon as today or so expect the registration emails this week is, is what I would like to say. A couple of other questions are, so if you happen to be a student from Ontario, to add to what Rodrigo mentioned, a wise thing to do would be to connect with your program advisor in Ontario, and they should be able to answer additional questions for you. So that's something that they should be able to do. So registration emails like a, is, is something that we've spoken about. Um, there are questions around start of the next term, date for the start, date when the next term would start. So we usually start on Monday of Monday of the week uh, when um, you know week when the term starts. So it is also sort of you know mentioned in the academic calendar. So please verify the start dates from there. Um, Rodrigo, do we do we have a confirmation on third or fourth there as the date, as the start date for the next term? Yeah, the start day would be January four. Is that so fourth of January. Fourth of January is is the start date for the term. Um, I do have a question here from an anonymous anonymous attendee, and the question is regarding change of the program from from project management to accounting. So please contact your program advisor. You would be routed to the RO team, and you should be able to you know get the program changed. There's um, uh, there's also a question regarding. Who who should be contacted regarding tuition fee and uh, you know what is going to be the deadline for the payment um, in the registration email you'd receive uh, the details it is, you know usually you should be able you should have about a week's time once you have been able to register to make those payments but then please uh, carefully read the emails that you receive so for ontario campus it'll be glad I'd, I'd be happy that you contact the uh, program advisors from Ontario, and they should be able to sort of, you know, help you. Um, it, so another anonymous attendee is mentioning, it is confirmed that we are going to college rather than just uh, the general studies courses. Yes, we are. And uh, a majority of the courses are going to be uh, offered on campus. So that is something, you know, we need to expect. Um, so those students who are Outside um, those students who are outside Canada, for them it is it is a little different. Uh, Aganjot also mentioned uh, that uh, is it mandatory to attend semester on campus? Um, it is it is definitely mandatory. So to please, so please you know we we have about a month's time. Please make relevant arrangements. Exactly. And uh, with regards to precautions now. The BC government and the BC Public Health uh, Department has released guidelines with regards to how should we operate uh, in, you know, in in campuses. And we, I just want to show you on behalf of the Yorkville team that we are taking all those relevant precautions. And it is just not Yorkville that's going back to campus. Uh, some of the post-secondary institutions were back to campus this term. So in fall term. The on-campus classes were started by majority of the institutions. We sort of, you know, tried to take it a little easy and make it a little easy for our students. But uh, January, we should be back to campus and we'd be monitoring the situation very closely. Why so? Because yes, we are, we are also regularly 
updated about um, about new variants that we are experiencing. But then, uh, just want to be want to assure you that we are going to be following all the guidelines that the uh, that you know that that we get from the public health uh, here in BC, and uh, we are going to be in line with those guidelines. But yes, um, we are also going to be in line with whatever the government requires us to do. Uh, with respect to going back to campus, and we certainly would have to start and be, you know, uh, make sure that we are part of this, make sure that we are in line with the rest of the post-secondary institutions. Um, I've already addressed questions around uh, questions around if you're outside Canada versus when when you're in Canada. Uh, the, there's a slight difference there in terms of on-campus classes for you. With regards to how much can you work in a week? Again, Rodrigo, is it, um, uh, is it student services that can help guide students about what are those possibilities? Over to you. So there's a question around uh, how many hours um, for students to work and those kinds of things. Would you yeah, know? you need to sh you need to check your study permit to have the proper answer, but then, and, and in general information, the students are eligible to work uh, part-time, 20 hours per week during their studies and during the breaks that I mentioned, that we have a break starting December and in the end of the terms, right? Before, at the end of the term and before starting your new term. So it means for this term is from December 26th and to January 3rd, you can work how many hours uh, you you can so there is no limit, but during the term, during the term, the one year study, we are eligible to work twenty hours per week. But it's important to check your study permit to give a specific answer because you can can have some remarks in your study permit that you can can this information can be changed. Um, just another question that you know I I see a lot of concerns around the Zoom classes that uh, that you've attended and would that affect the work permit uh, that the students can sort of, you know, apply for? During pandemic, um, everybody had to look at an alternative mode for, um, you know, for course delivery. So it is not just your will. Majority of the institutions, they had to look at alternatives so that we could still let students continue studying and uh, we were also you know, wanting to make sure that we were adhering to the guidelines that were provided by the ministry, by the public health officials. So uh, when there were lockdowns, uh, the Zoom, the classes that were conducted on Zoom, uh, that is something that is, that, that's purely accepted for the purpose of, uh, purpose of eligibility for work permits. So there's gonna be no problem with that. Uh, that's totally acceptable. It would not be, you know, it, that delivery mode is acceptable, but during the pandemic only. Uh, that's that's primarily the reason that we would have to resume to on-campus instruction from winter 2022 onwards, because now the ministry says that it is safe enough for everybody to return uh, to campuses and the post-secondary institutions also to go to back campus. Having said that, um, uh, once again, uh, we are taking very relevant and required measures to make sure that the space that we work in is, is safe for all. Um, majority of us are vaccinated. It's for your own benefit that you know you sort of get vaccinated. Uh, but uh, like it has not been mandated at other places, we we do have, you know, we do have relevant guidelines uh, regarding that. Um, there's also there's also an FAQ that is available on local universities website. It was shared in Rodrigo's presentation as well. Uh, and Rodrigo, if you can possibly add that to the chat, that is something that students could refer to on an ongoing basis. And, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, me, it's student services. We are there almost uh, all the time to help you out. If you have questions, if, it's something, if it is something that you're not clear about, you may certainly want to connect with the relevant team and we should be able to help you instantly. So, um, yeah, there are some students mentioned about scholarship. So scholarship, if you didn't start, yeah, 
please talk to your admissions advisor. In case you already start your program, please talk to your student finance team. So they are the, the right ones to give all the information about the scholarship. Um, now, there's another, <coughs> excuse me, there's another question that has been asked Rodrigo, and this is regarding the address. Uh, which is the right address for the students to fill in? So some of them are arriving or they're coming to Canada next week. So should they be initially providing their, uh, you know, the relevant Indian or the relevant, um, you know, the relevant address outside Canada and then updating it once they're here? So what it really is the process to be followed to update uh, address and contact information, if you could guide students about that. Please. Yeah, that's a good question. So if you are, uh, overseas, so you can add your uh, home country address at this point. As soon as you arrive here, you can open a ticket or inform your program advisors your uh, Canadian address and your Canadian phone number. So that's very important information to have always uh, updated. Even if you change, because it's very common when you're a student, we are moving to different addresses. So it's important to keep your uh, your address and phone numbers up to date all the time. Now, some of the things that have been asked is, is regarding the general studies courses. If they are, uh, you know, if they are being offered uh, on Zoom, would it be affecting my visa or would that impact my, uh, my PGWP and those kind of things? But then most of the general studies courses have, uh, earlier also been offered as hybrid and you do, really do not need to worry about that. Once again, you if you have concerns, you can certainly contact your program advisors about it. Uh, well, um, the classes, um, the, the classes next term are going to be conducted, majority of them from uh, Monday to Friday. So on-campus classes would primarily be from Monday to Fridays. And uh, there would be a few, very few online classes or on Zoom classes that would be, uh, you know, that would take place on Saturday as well. There's another question that a student has um, um, to be, you know, would it be safe to be back on camp campus? Uh, well, uh, there are, uh, you know, there are procedures that have been set in place. R Rodrigo, do you want to highlight um, as one of the last opportunities to talk about, you know, what precautions are we taking on campus uh, to make sure that it is safe for all to attend? And if students have to update information about uh, the vaccine status and those kind of things, if you could really help. Yeah, so as I mentioned, the vaccination card is not mandatory for attending classes. And we are keeping, and the masks are mandatory. So for in our common areas and also for when you are in class, it's mandatory for uh, professors, students, and, and staff to keep the mask all the time here. And we are keeping, um, we are, I ask you everybody to keep distance to each other when it's possible. And we are planning to have up to 24 students per class. So that's it's a small number. If you compare all the institutions, that's a, that's a good advantage. And there we have here, we will change all the air conditioning system here. So to make sure we have uh, the best solution for our air circulation here and on campus as well. And all, all this, the designs we have many, we have our boards, we have signs uh, to keep, to reinforce all the measures that we have here. And also if you are feeling sick or if you're not feeling well, please inform your professor that we are not feeling well and the reason we are not attending your class. And, and also we can inform our, our program advisors if it's something that we need you to, to your support. Okay. So some of the students are traveling to Canada and they are traveling as soon as next week, which is great. Um, you have to, you know, when you travel to Canada and when you reach your respective province, you need to contact your, uh, you know, you need to contact your program advisors once again. They would help you in making the required change from uh, from classes that you were taking in BBA Global to 
that transition to on-campus classes would happen automatically for you. So please contact the university officials and make sure that you know you're able to get that change done to your program delivery mode, and uh, you would automatically be asked to enroll in on-campus classes. Um, well. Um, and also to add to what Rodrigo mentioned, there's a lot of cleaning that happens on a very regular basis on campus between classes as well. And that uh, along with other precautions, of course, regular cleaning is something that should help prevent any transmission or that, the, that should help prevent, uh, you know, that, that should help um, everybody in general to remain safe. With that, likely um, all the questions have been answered, and I also believe that uh, the time's up for uh, for the webinar that had to be, uh, you know, the time's up for webinar. Rodrigo, is there more that we need to add, or is there? Something? Yes. So yeah, there are many questions regarding. So so I need to go to campus. So I believe I believe you already answered those questions. So that's mandatory to be on campus to attend class. That's, that's the government decision. So we are following, actually we are one of the last institutions to return to campus. So, but I understand that we, we need to adapt to adapt this new reality. I know that is even for us because we are working from home for so many months and we are already returned to campus. So I know that the couple, the first two weeks or three weeks is something because we are very comfortable and having classes from Zoom, so we don't need to go around, so we can having classes from your, your places. Yeah, it takes time to adapt, we understand that, so, but it's important. It's very important for experience, instead of experience to have on-campus classes. Okay, don't hesitate if you're having, if you feel anxious or you have our um, wellness support, and that's a very important to contact you and any accommodation that you may need. So please contact your accommodation accessibility team as well. Uh, any, any kind of question that you may have, uh, please contact our program advisor. So we are here to, to support anything that you need here. I know you received so many questions here. I believe you answered most of them. I'm sorry if you're not answering now, and, but uh, we are tracking those questions here. We'll be happy to answer those questions that we didn't right. answer. There's another very nice one, Rodrigo, and we should be, you know, we should definitely look at that. So students are um, a little concerned about uh, about who their program advisor is and how can they find out where th the information regarding the program advisor. So can you help with that, Rodrigo? Yeah, this information will be when you receive your registration link. We also can see who is your program advisor. And on Moodle as well, we can also find this information. But if you have any questions, please open a ticket and we, we are uh, refer your transfer your ticket to the, your program advisor. So yeah, please feel free to contact your program advisor anytime that you need. And uh, there's this very nice thing, Rodrigo and team manage this drop-in session daily from Monday to Friday um, from three to 4 p.m. And the link, the Zoom link, for uh, that uh, drop-in session is available. So just in case you, you, you may not have information available um, and there's more information that you need, there's all, it's always helpful to join this drop-in session and inquire. So that's, that's something that you, uh, you know, this link and the passcode is something that you should save and you should be able to join the drop-in session and uh, get more information. All right, uh, well, uh, initial reluctance is something that I can understand, but then trust me for sure, you will enjoy being back on campus. You'll enjoy all the clubs and the activities that uh, Rodrigo is gonna be planning for you for the next term. And we hope to see you on campus next term. Uh, with that, I believe uh, we are good to close the session for today. And if required, uh, please feel free to get in touch with us. All the best. Yeah, thank you very much for everybody to attend. So one question that I have here, maybe the last one that I will answer. So we, we are recommend not having more than two 
classes per day, okay? So that's what we're recommending for all the students. But other questions, we, are, we have all the questions logged here. So we are keeping those and answer you as soon as, you, as possible if you're not answered during the session. And remind you, we are keeping this webinar on YouTube so we can access all the information that was provided here. Okay, feel free to contact. Have a good day, everybody.